Hey everybody, it's Brandon here with Low T Nation coming at you guys again from the kitchen. I just want to say, man, thanks so much for all the, the crazy positive feedback we're getting on these videos. Um, we do know what we're doing here and I know it shows and I just really appreciate you guys relaying that back to us. So thank you so much. Also, thanks for the amazing questions that you guys keep pouring in. One of the questions we got yesterday was why use HCG versus Clomid or vice versa and we're going to talk about that today. In my opinion, HCG is way underutilized in the industry and Clomid is way overutilized in the industry and we'll get into some of the details as of why. Now I know you guys have seen this before in these videos, but um, humor me for a second. I need this up here in order to, to describe when to use each one and the subtle differences. So we, we know that you know the, the testicular function is governed by this, this hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis, okay? It's a, it's a cascade of hormones that either create activity or shut down activity. So the way it works, the hypothalamus is basically the thermostat. It's sensing for levels of testosterone and it's doing that by sensing levels of estrogen. Okay, so up here, these are estrogen receptors. When they get low, Okay, the hypothalamus says, wow, I'm low on estrogen. Estrogen only comes from testosterone in the man's body, primarily. So if I'm low on estrogen, I must be low on testosterone. Let's fire up some testosterone production. So the hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is picked up by the pituitary. And the pituitary, it's kind of like a, a double barreled shotgun here. It fires two things at once. One is LH, one is FS. H. Okay, and the testicle are primarily made up of two different types of cells, Leydig cells that the luteinizing hormone operates on to facilitate the, the creation of testosterone, and FSH works on the Sertoli cells in the testicles to facilitate spermatogenesis or the creation of sperm. Okay, so they're both going to go to the testicles. LH is going to create testosterone. FSH is going to create sperm. We're going to get into that a little bit later. The, the testicles are going to upregulate testosterone production, which is going to then in turn be converted through an aromatase function into E2, estradiol. That works on these sensors. The sensors start seeing it and they say, okay, shut down gonadotropin releasing hormone. Let's put the brakes on the system because we have enough testosterone, because we have enough estrogen. Lots of moving parts, right? Lots of points of failure as well. So the difference between using HCG and using Clomid is where they actually jump in, in the sequence, um, you know, in, in the whole production cycle. So HCG is nothing more than synthetic LH. And when I say synthetic, I just mean it's, HCG is actually, even in the man's body, it's a bioidentical hormone. The man's body doesn't make much, but the man's body does make some. So your body knows how to handle it, but your body interprets it as LH. Okay, so what does that mean? We're jumping in behind the pituitary, so the pituitary can be shut down, right? These sensors can be shut down. All of this can be shut down. We're jumping in front of the testicular function to make testosterone with effectively LH. The testicles pick it up, upregulate the testosterone production. You have testosterone in your system, at least up to the ceiling, your own natural production ceiling. Okay, and that's obviously different for every guy's. So what does Clomid do? So Clomid is what's called a selective estrogen receptor modulator. You'll see this if you're out surfing the bro science forums. Um, there's a lot of different terms. Clomid is definitely the most popular one. <clears throat> So remember, these are estrogen receptors, okay? What happens when the estrogen receptors see that there's just a little bit of testosterone? They fire up this whole sequence through the hypothalamus using gonadotropin releasing hormone. So what the CIRMs do is they shut these guys off. So basically, these receptors go, man, I don't see any estrogen at all. And the funny thing is, everybody thinks that Clomid is an estrogen blocker. It is in a sense, because once it sits on all these receptors, real estrogen can't get to the receptors, but the only way that it can actually sit on an estrogen receptor, it's actually an estrogen, 
believe it or not. Um, clomid is an estrogen, but it has a, an inert bind. It has no agonistic properties at all when that hormone binds to the receptor. It just sits there. So effectively, it's like putting cones in the parking spots um, where it's not a real, you know, there's nothing really going on there, but nothing else can use those receptors. But the deal is, even if it's cones in a parking spot, you know, there's nowhere else to park. So the body goes, man, I'm completely out of estrogen. I need to get me some more estrogen. How do we do that? We're going to make some more testosterone and we're going to fire all this up. So if the sequence is starting up here and the hypothalamus is releasing a boatload of gonadotropin releasing hormone because these all of these estrogens are basically saying you have no or like these receptors are saying you have no estrogen in your body guess what's happening both of these are fired up right lh to whatever extent your pituitary can produce it and fsh to whatever extent your pituitary can produce it are going to be produced heavily okay so you're going to have testosterone production you're also going to have sperm production as well okay now the difference between hcg and clomid number one hcg has very few side effects and clomid has a lot of fairly severe side effects in a lot of people the other issue is that clomid raises something called sex hormone binding globulin and that effectively, and it's a little more complicated than this, but that's effectively the gap between free and total testosterone. So guys that have been on clomid for a long time, some of them can have very high total testosterone levels, but very low free T because they have this overproduction and overabundance of sex hormone binding globulin. All right? So HCG creates testicular function to make testosterone. All right? Clomid might, if the pituitary gland has the capacity to do it, Clomid complicates things by adding sex hormone binding globulin increase, and for some guys, sperm. Some guys don't want a higher sperm count. Now let me, make, let me be very, very clear, guys. If you're on testosterone and taking HCG, according to our chart, there's no FSH production. That's not entirely true. It is not effective birth control, and I have patients on my program all the time getting pregnant without using Clomid, okay? But that is the only time we actually use Clomid in our clinic. Typically, there are exceptions, but typically we only use Clomid when someone is in the family planning process. You know, they want to have a baby. They're trying to conceive with their loved ones. Um, so they're on Clomid. But we tell them, the minute that your wife or a significant other becomes pregnant, stop taking the Clomid. Let's get that sex hormone binding globulin back down and under control, and we'll keep their testosterone production up with HCG, okay? So again, HCG is great to stimulate the testicles to produce testosterone. Clomid, a lot of doctors use Clomid, and this is something else I wanna talk about. A lot of doctors use Clomid to determine whether the hypogonadism is primary or secondary. Primary meaning the testicles can't make testosterone anymore secondary meaning something over here is not working and there's a lot of variables and environmental factors medications stress there's a lot of things that can shut all of this other stuff down but when guys use clomid to determine if it's secondary hypogonadism what's the solution well you can't leave guys on clomid forever to keep all this stuff going because they're going to have low t even if their their total t is high right because their free t is going to end up low because all the sex hormone binding globulin so even if they're using clomid to test the answer is still hcg if they figure out yeah you do have a secondary condition because we've got some testicular um, increase of testosterone production once we put you on the program i hope this is all making sense so even if a guy's using Clomid to test, you know, with all the crazy side effects that it can cause, with the increase in sex hormone binding globulin, it's still a short-term test because if you do have secondary hypogonadism, the answer is HCG. So you might as well test with HCG up front. And the way to do that is take a baseline test on a guy. And these are for doctors that don't want to put guys immediately on testosterone. Not our school of thought, but hey, you know, they get to practice how they want to practice. If they want to test it, they need to baseline a guy without HCG, put him on HCG for six weeks or so, and then test again. And that increase is going to show whether the problem is a primary, you know, a production issue or a secondary, a signaling issue. All right, so our, at Low T Nation here, our rule of thought is HCG always, unless the patient is trying to conceive. 
okay? Now the other issue about, about that, you'll see a lot of people say, oh, I take HCG for fertility. HCG doesn't do anything for fertility. It keeps testicular function healthy. It keeps the entire testicular uh, set of cells healthy, but it doesn't signal those Sertoli cells to make any sperm at all, okay? And the two things you need to make sperm are number one, endogenous testosterone production, okay? So if you have a guy that's been on testosterone replacement for a while, um, he doesn't have any, this is without HCG, he doesn't have any endogenous production. You know, it's all exogenous tests. So that guy's not going to be able to um, make, te make sperm, and that's why there's a rumor that says if you're trying to have kids, you can't be on testosterone. Well, you can if you're on Clomid, because that's gonna stimulate FSH, right? And if you're on HCG, because that's gonna stimulate endogenous testosterone production in the testicle. Those Sertoli cells need next door testosterone, not free floating in the body, but they need testosterone right beside them in order to facilitate that spermatogenesis function, okay? So, um, if you wanna have bab babies, you can be on testosterone. In fact, a lot of fertility clinics, guess what their level one treatment for men is? Clomid and HCG. HCG improves testicular function and health. Clomid signals through the, the, you know, through the pituitary using FSH, the production of sperm. All right, so I hope this clears it up, guys. If you're on Clomid, like using it as a PCT or, or something like that, really give this a, a couple of watches. Make it make, it make sense to you um, because HCG is going to do everything as far as testicular production of testosterone that Clomid will do without any of the pitfalls, without any of the side effects, and without the sex hormone binding globulin production. All right, so I hope this helps, guys. If you have any questions, hit us up. Um, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, especially if you're on YouTube right now. Like us if you're on Facebook, and please share this information. This information is valuable to the people that need it, okay? So if you find it useful, there's probably people in your circle that would also find it useful. Please share it. So thanks, guys. Have a great day. See you soon.